Hello and welcome to yet another episode of my podcast. Our this week's topic is how to name a brand, how to name your business. Let's see what are these steps that will help us name our brand in the right fashion. But before we move ahead, you know the drill. It's time to have a word with me, Rajiv Thawan. See you on the other side of the intro music. In this podcast my goal is to help you understand what exactly are the steps or the practices that one should keep in mind while naming a brand. You will also learn the pros and cons of various types of brand names. Sounds interesting? Let's jump in. So you've decided to start a business and the next thing that you need apart from money and a lot of other stuff is a good brand name. Let's see how do we name a brand? Are there any rules? Well, there aren't any rules as such, but are there best practices to name a brand? Of course there are. Let's take an example of personal brand, you know, where we're using our name as a brand name, so that's like a personal brand name. The big issue with a personal brand name is that everything depends on that one single person. So you become the entity, you become the brand. It's got its own positives though to use your own name as a brand name but then it has its drawbacks too. So what are the positives? The positives are there is a personal connect, there is an emotional connect, there's a person on the other side and it's not a lifeless sort of an affair. What are the drawbacks? Well, if you falter somewhere or things go wrong with you, then the brand has the possibility of going down south. In such a scenario it's like there's a lot that's riding on one person's shoulders especially if you're a startup it also is difficult for you to showcase yourself as a bigger brand when you're using your own personal name so it is recommended to avoid a personal name for a brand then there are those names which are used or made out of twisted words words with a rehashed sort of a spelling twisted words or rather words with twisted spellings are not recommended in today's digital day and age specifically because of things like search engine optimization urls etc because the word will be used in various formats the brand name will be used in various formats so you have to be mindful of the application of the brand name The next one is using complicated words words which are not heard of again here the problem is that if you use words which are slightly more common it will help you in creating a good brand recall we'll talk more on brand recall a little later for now let's move ahead with the next one the next one is homonym words now these are words that have contradictory meanings so it's important that whenever you're trying to shortlist a name for your brand you go online and check for various meanings of that particular word because that's extremely important the last thing that anybody would want is the name having a negative connotation to it or a negative meaning to it then there is something known as phonetics which is more about how the name sounds actually that's extremely important because ultimately you would want your name to sound really well so one of the tips here is to use some vowel sounds in your name now these are a little different from the written vowel sounds so try to stick to the a e i o use but more in the sound and not just in the written format the next step is to remember the target audience you know actually this can be the first step also you can always keep an objective in mind a target audience in mind and then work backwards to creating a good brand name for your business it's simple you know you need to understand whether your end consumer or customer is going to be gen z gen y gen x or the millennials or what is the age group of these people and then what do they like what they dislike and based on all those things their experiences etc you can make a small list and then focus on creating a brand name through that remember that a great brand name that does not connect with the target audience is of no use While we are talking about the age group of the target audience it's also important that we keep in mind the other demographics like where they live the geographical location their awareness how much they've traveled what is their household income like what are the other brands that they connect with or use on a day to day basis these are some basics that will help you create a good brand name for your business 
One of the big questions that most of us have is should my brand name directly talk about the line of business the line of work or can it be something random something completely away from what I'm doing Well there's no simple single answer to this but the bottom line is that if it sounds great if it has a good recall value and if it fits the bill in a lot of other cases then you can go ahead with a brand name that may or may not connect directly with your business line The next thing to keep in mind is to think big from the start. A lot of startups come up with names which they think okay, you know, it's something that I'll use for some time and then we'll see later. But you always have to keep in mind what if you become a multi-billion dollar business tomorrow? Will this name justify that roadmap? And if you feel it won't, then just take a pause and think again. While creating a brand name, thinking about the personality and the purpose of the brand is equally important and you should have that handy with you. Ideally, a brand name should be given by a professional, but again, that's not a rule either. If you can come up with something interesting, do give it a shot. The next big question that a lot of us have got is what should be the length of a name should it be a long name or should it be a short name or shorter names better? So, let's address this. In today's digital world having a shorter name will always give you an edge over the other names around remember the application of your name it's going to be used in hundreds of places from directories to url of your website to a visiting card which will have a very small space for your name to be written and to the display picture of your social channels so the shorter the name the better the application of the name in all these spaces even search engines like google give a little more value to domain names which are shorter and crisper compared to the longer ones the shorter names are also very easy to remember to memorize with so many advantages why would you go for a name which is extremely lengthy or long but does that mean longer names don't make sense absolutely not even longer names make sense but then they should check other boxes we'll talk about that a little later a lot of us are always thinking of names that should be creative right but then there's always this decision that one has to make should i go with a name which is extremely creative or should i go with a name which is simpler that sounds better that has good readability in most cases it's always better to choose a name which is great in terms of readability and how it sounds compared to the one that is extremely creative but doesn't check the other boxes The big exception however is a long name which has a great history or historical connect or it can create some sort of a recall value something that's been derived from anything that the audience is already aware of that brand recall is what we always need to aim for and that should supersede all the other best practices In today's day and age every customer is exposed to a million brand names on a regular basis so your name has to stand out the job of a good brand name is to own a little bit of a real estate in the minds of the customer and that can be done when you have a strong brand recall when the recall is strong the real estate in the mind will always be there ultimately you want people to remember your name isn't it and that's how they will choose you over your competitors let me give you a good example of a brand name that we chose for our digital marketing and branding company and how we checked some of these boxes and while we didn't check all of them we still aimed at getting a name which works for us Our branding and digital marketing company is called What's in a Name. While it follows very few best practices that I mentioned in this podcast, it hits a home run in the brand recall aspect. Most of our clients are decently aware, educated and well traveled, and they all know about the famous line by Shakespeare. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. By William Shakespeare. Now that's a name that most people would never forget. It's been 13 years and the name has done just great for us. As a creative agency, we had to make sure that our name is creative and has a great brand recall. If I can't name my brand properly, there's little possibility I'll be able to give a good brand name for your business. With this we come to the end of this episode. I hope you got enough insight into how you should come up with a great brand name for your business. If you liked this piece of content please share I am sure you will positively impact someone thank you